Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. As a chemist, I deal with chemicals all the time, and I've gotten a bit blasé about the hazards they pose. I don't drink them or rub them on my face or anything, but I don't take extreme precautions or try to avoid them. The fact that the documents describing the hazards operate on the Chicken Little principle doesn't help me take them seriously. The point I'm trying to make here is that harmless chemicals tend to get treated as if they're dangerous. And even the harmful ones are treated as if they're far more hazardous than they actually are. One that's gotten this treatment and a lot of attention besides is bisphenol A, or BPA. Phenol is a molecule that looks like this. A flat ring with an oxygen and a hydrogen sticking off it. Bisphenol is two of them with a linker group in the middle. There are about 20 different bisphenols with different linkers and a different collection of letters after the name. Bisphenol A is linked with acetone, hence the A in the name. Most nail polish removers contain acetone and is used as facial peels as well. Acetone contains three carbon atoms and they end up wedged in a perpendicular line like this between the two phenols. This conglomeration can then be linked through the oxygens here by another small, highly reactive molecule to form a chain of thousands or millions of repeating units, or polymer. Polymers are what plastics are made of, and the one made of BPA is a type of polycarbonate. BPA can also be added as a small molecule to other polymers like flexible varieties of PVC, where it mops up active oxygen species and stops them causing trouble. BPA is ubiquitous. It's in a gazillion different products, including water bottles and the plastic lining of food cans. This is where things get contentious. The BPA in polymer form is harmless, but there's mounting evidence to suggest that BPA in small molecule form causes problems. This can come either from that additive in other polymers, or from the BPA polycarbonate breaking down and releasing the small molecules. In the body, BPA has an effect similar to estrogen. It's a very tiny effect, but it's there. How dangerous this is is still iffy. Most national health agencies have said that BPA is perfectly safe until the last couple of years when a lot of them changed their tune and started classifying it as harmful. The studies indicating harm have mostly been on animals and not humans. But at the same time, the studies calling it safe only looked at temporary exposure rather than the chronic dose we get because it's in everything. Because it mimics a hormone, it can screw up the balance of all your other hormones, and that can cause problems in a person who's still growing or developing, especially babies and children. If you're an adult, you're probably going to be mostly okay. If you're a kid, or someone who is planning to get pregnant, already pregnant, or is still nursing, you need to be careful, and that's what most of these new regulations are focusing on, banning BPA and objects and materials that infants and children are most likely to come in contact with. That's the effect in humans. If we're talking about animals, then all of that iffiness goes away. This stuff has been tested in a wide variety of different animals and is terrible for all of them. Insects, fish, amphibians, crustaceans, it affects the reproduction of just about everything. The molecule itself is quickly metabolized and turned into something harmless, which is why the whole thing was classified as harmless for so long but it's being released into the environment continuously, so it's everywhere and continuously replenished. I've avoided stating an opinion on bans based on its effect on humans, but we dump thousands of tons of this stuff into the environment every year, and regulations aimed at reducing or preventing that will get no argument from me. That's BPA. For adult males like me, it's probably not that bad, but the majority of people on this planet are not adult males. However, the majority of decision makers are, which is probably why its effects on pregnant women were ignored for so long. Nevertheless, its hazards should be treated with respect and caution, not fear. And more studies are always needed to reduce the uncertainty and iffiness around its effects. Thanks for watching. I've been Steve.